What's up, Fritz fam? Welcome to KG Tropics. You're the aquascaper today. Hey guys! Hey! How are ya? Did you look at your... Uh, a little late. We're gonna blame that on Jimmy behind me. Um, so it's his fault. How was your flight, Jimmy? Good? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, what you do not know is that KG had a debate at Aquashell Aquarium Festival in Chicago with Jake Adams, our very special friend. They were debating saltwater versus freshwater. Jake and I had an agenda, which was we wanted to bridge the gap between freshwater and saltwater. Yeah. And to make it all one community rather than everybody on one side and everybody on the other. And we were just getting started. We had a lot of good momentum and then Unfortunately, that momentum was stopped. So this is going to start that momentum right back up again. Well, as Jake would want, he would want that to continue on. And so that's what we're here to do today. You're going to go fish only on this one, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I can be convinced otherwise. But as of right now, the plan is fish only, live rock. Set on that, then let's go that direction today. If you want the coral bug later and you get that, We'll, uh, we'll partner up and we'll do another one. Yeah, we'll just get another tank. Yeah. I What's mean, wrong with that? We have so Perfect. many. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to Planet Aquariums. They gave us the aquarium to get going today. Uh, we have a Tideline sump that we're going to work with. And this is going to be a planet stand. So mechanical filtration with your socks here. This is where the water is going to come in. And this is where you would put your skimmer. Um, we used a uh, Red Sea Starfish skimmer. That will give us a lot of time to have the micro bubbles from a protein skimmer, um, which helps to bring those undissolved organics into the collection cup before you go through um, this filter pad and up to the aquarium through your uh, main system pump. We're going to install a refugium that just allows us to grow very fast growing algaes inside of this chamber keeps your fast growing algae down underneath the aquarium. It outcompetes fast growing algae or slower growing algae from growing inside of your aquarium. So just more of a natural filtration component. John, are you ready? I am ready. I am so ready. All right. John, after we get this put together, if you need to change your sump, you're going to have to pull this thing back out. If you're designing your own stand, you make this a side door. Because then if you need to change out your sump, you don't have to pull your stand out. You can just open this door, pull it out from the side. Uh, everybody that's in this room, with the exception of me, is, uh, well, vertically challenged. <laughs> and this is a high stand. I think we ought to bring the tank in behind the stand so that we're lifting it up and not having to contend with this frame. Absolutely. I've been sitting here looking at this thing for two weeks making that plan, so. Ready? Go. Oh my God, this is nothing. What was I worried about? <laughs> I kept trying to tell you. <laughs> Even though we're gonna go with hard plumb on the drain, I'd still recommend flex hose uh, tubing for the returns. Yeah, we run these on the beta system and I have these on that tank too. Yeah, these are excellent because they're Wi-Fi, you know? You can control it from your phone. You're the boss here. Mm -hmm. I'm the rookie. There you go, perfect. Go ahead, that will hand that over. and I didn't even shake while I was doing it. You should have seen him. He was like. <laughs> Added effects. <laughs> Let's talk about refugiums. So what we're about to do now is add this mineral mud into our refugium chamber. And what this is is really a soil of sorts that has tons of vitamins and nutrients that is going to feed what we're trying to grow in the refugium, which could be a mangrove, calerpa, or catamorpha. So we're gonna put it in now and I'm gonna put some plastic over it so that way when the water comes in, it doesn't disturb the, the mineral bed. Okay, now for the fun part, we're actually going to make up John's salt water here and, and see it's just a fine powder. These are 20 ounce uh, containers. One of these 
for every five gallons. So how many gallons? Um, 150. This is 150. Let's see, 30 of these. And we have some pumps running in there. We're gonna mix this to 1.021. Things that you might want to pay attention to are the temperature of your water. You don't want it to be over 78 degrees, really. Anything over 80, you're going to experience precipitation. So just like we did up above with the carob seed bag to help minimize the dust production and the kick up from the water being added, we brought it down here into the sump so that way we could actually lay it on top of it and as it filled it made this a lot more manageable as the bottom of the tank filled so we didn't have to have debris falling everywhere. The first one I was ready to just move on from, it was the second one where it was like and now back to you, John. <laughs> okay, the most exciting part of the tank setup is actually adding the water. When you're doing reef salt water, you want to do it at 1.025. When you're doing a fish tank only, that can be at 1.021. Um, actually, the lower the salinity is, uh, the better the, the conditions are to not have ick in your aquarium and other diseases. And so, uh, 2 1 is what we went. All right, we're in the revealing stage of the process. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, hello. Wow. The shimmer think? is next level. Oh. And it's, it's, it's cloudy right now still, so when this clears up, it's gonna be like a crystal. <laughs> that is... Absolutely stunning. Yeah, you can. You can add turbo start as you increase your bio load. When you go get three or four more fish, you can add some turbo start just in case that new bio load, uh, your bacteria hasn't built up. All right, Jimmy, here we are at Aquariums Unlimited in Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is both a fresh and saltwater store, but we're here to pick out saltwater fish for John and Lisa's tank. Mark's waiting inside. He's got some fish picked out. Let's go check. Let's go. All right, let's go. Okay, John and Lisa, are you ready? to maybe pick out some fish that you super like? I am so ready. I like fish that aren't gonna eat, beat each other up and are larger. I like the small ones too. Thinking maybe a little aggressive? I Entertain mean, aggressive? you know, how about mildly aggressive? How's that? Mildly aggressive. Let's go walk down the aisle. Lisa, you know it's all pending your approval right. in the end. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Wanted to make sure, you know, we were on the same page there. Oh yes. Son of a gun. Oh I even God. haven't seen, I even had it silenced. <laughs> You might want to start oh. looking for a replacement. I know. Is... Let me have that. Yeah, you take that. <laughs> Burfish as an option. Um, very unique. Their eyeballs are really cool. Very do, they, metallic do they blow looking. up like puffers? They can if they get very upset. That's the cutest fish I've ever seen. I know. He's got great brows. He's got really good brows. A lot of potential to go in my tank. I like him a lot. He's pretty cute. Him. Oh, she, wow. We already named him. I just did. It's love at she first comes sight. up with names. The instant she sees fish. It's a gizmo? He looks okay. like a gizmo. It's a gizmo. What about this cute fella here to the, so looks the like orange a toad fish? He's actually kind of cool. Going to be a very chill fish. Doesn't move a whole lot. Probably going to be a pretty big hider for you until it's around feeding time. So you do have to take that into a bit of consideration with as much rock work as you've got. And with the tank being newer, you're not going to have a system established just yet where everybody teaches a new fish to go to one spot to eat. Okay. So a fish like this being more shy may want to hold off on for a little while. Cancel that one. Still okay. everybody can train them anyway. We've got the assassin triggers and a little scope is saying these guys are cool not to be confused with the Picasso trigger. Similar markings not quite the same though. Pretty docile can have a little bit of an attitude good movement. They're always going to be out. They like to find little places to sleep at night. So once he establishes where his house is, you'll always know where to find I him. I love him. I yeah. love the blue and yeah, black the stripes really on nice. the head. That is, yeah, 
I love them. Now you've got your clownfish and you've got antheus. Antheus are not going to be probably something that you're going to want to contemplate for this tank since you are wanting to lean more on the aggressive side. The black storm clowns. Yeah, those guys are cool. I don't think I can get those though because I think she's going to want those when she gets I'm her tank. I'm coming back and getting those. All right. Probably tell you to stay away from these solid blue guys. These are devil damsels. They call them that for a reason. <laughs> the fox face. So we've got a yellow fox face. I know you talked a lot about wanting one of these guys. Indeed. Maybe two. Yes, indeed. Um, one that I think would actually be pretty cool for you that you could do, since I know you said you wanted to do an angel, was there's actually a juvenile emperor down here. I see him. What's really cool about this one is that he is so heavy on his juvenile markings. He actually has a full circle ring on the body. As he ages and gets older, he will eventually get those rings to straighten out and turn into stripes. It is a very cool process. Teenager, they kind of go through a little bit of an ugly phase, and then eventually they look beautiful and they rise up into their emperor status. That's a beautiful fish when they mature. Mm -hmm but it's mind-blowing when they're small like that. It, it's, oh. It looks like an eyeball to keep larger predators away, but there's also another fish that looks similar to him that tastes bad. Oh, that's funny. And so funny. it protects the babies. Oh, that's cool. hilarious. Mm -hmm. People say fish ain't smart. Come on, they right. know what they're doing. It's nature. So we got another here, fox face We do here. have another fox face. So we have a magnificent fox face. This one is actually my favorite type because as they get older, you will see the red on the top fin come in a bit more. The yellow does stay bright as they age as well. And the maroon clowns. The maroon clowns. Now, these guys can be a little on the aggressive side. You might have to guard yourself a little bit whenever you're working in there. I don't potentially see you working a whole lot, but they can become a little territorial over specific areas. It will always keep that beautiful dark red hue that it's got going on. We were at a fish store in Richmond, Virginia years ago, and they had one of those that was 30 years old. Yeah. And it jumped out of the tank right in front of us, landed on the ground. The owner picked it up like, ah, no big deal, put it back in the tank and it was fine. Everybody loves Dory. They found her. No, see, Keep here's going. what I want to do. I want to take them all now. One of everything, Mark. Wrap them up. <laughs> all right, so let's figure this out, and then we'll grab Jimmy, and we'll tell everybody what we're going to get. Right? And through the magic of television, we're back at the KG Tropicals Old Fish House. Fritz fam, get ready to see which fish we picked out. We're gonna drip acclimate them all in the same bucket, and then one at a time, we'll reveal to you who John and Lisa picked for their aquarium. Whoa, whoa, oh, you're right. <laughs> what we got here? I really didn't imagine that one would look like that. Yeah. It's kind of a long trip to get back to the fish store, though. Hmm. No, it's not that easy. Sometimes the air gets stuck and they will die. Hey, Evie, um, it looks like the fish are almost ready to go. Will you go ask John for that uh, super secret test kit I sent him? Yes, I'll be right back. Okay. All right, fishies. You about ready to go to your new home? Hey, John. Sean wanted to know if you had that special test kit product that you sent me. I do. Cool. Here, Thank wait a minute. Don't forget the shirts. Thank you. We're going to go test the water. Get ready for all those fish to go in. Okay. Hey. Uh -huh. You got it? I did. I got it. Got a bunch of other stuff, too. Yeah. T shirts and plushie. But it's my plushie. So the way that these are made, if you're way over full, Evie, grab John, it's time to add the fish. I heard it's time. It is time. Are we putting fish? Don't drop it, John, don't drop it, don't drop it. Oh, we're doing two clowns at a time, I like it. Dip that in, 
you know what? You cannot have a saltwater tank without clowns. So am I just dumping it in, Sean, or? Tip it down into the water. And just let them swim out. This is a male and a female. And that's about all I know. Check them out. The cool part is with those, you wouldn't really imagine that the female is the much larger of the two and the more aggressive. This is a fish. The second I saw this and Evie told me it would be okay to put him in the tank, I said, blue and black stripes going across the eyes sold me. But he is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this guy. Are you kidding me? All right. I'm going to be super careful with this one, so I'm going to go ahead and dump him in. This guy, you do not want to let him air at all. A puffer fish, although it's cool looking when they puff up, it's very dangerous for them. You do not want them to get air in their system at all, or an air bubble could get trapped and they could die. So we're going to completely release them underneath the water so there's no chance of that happening. And that fish has already been named Gizmo by Lisa. I am obsessed with freshwater angelfish and saltwater angelfish. I was so glad to hear that I could put these in, put this guy in with them. And it's one of the most gorgeous fish I've ever seen. And I, I'm well aware that they change drastically when they mature. He is, and I say he, again, I don't know what he is, but I'm gonna always call him a he until I know otherwise. <laughs> he is unbelievable. This is your standard fox face. Now be careful. They Again, are venomous, right? Fins are venomous. Yep. This fish is the whole reason why this project got done. This is the fish that was promised to me by Jake Adams, and it's finally coming to fruition now. And uh, spoiler alert, I found out from my saltwater fish expert over there that I can have two fox faces. So, got a bonus. This is the one that is named Jake. This is the magnificent fox face. I've also heard them called something, what else? Majestic? Majestic or magnificent. This was promised to me on stage by Jake Adams at Aquashella. Chicago, 12 days before Jake passed. So this is extremely important to me and uh, had no choice but to name this fish Jake. Of course I did. And the other fox face is RB, which is for reef builders. There we go. That's the guy right there. All right, all the fish are in. We'll get these lights off pretty quick. Try to let them find a home. We did add seven fish today. It's probably not typical of what I would actually ask one of you guys to put in your aquarium for the first time if this is your first saltwater aquarium. You know, with TurboStart, we're highly confident that you're not gonna see ammonia and nitrate levels. TurboStart is used in big public aquariums, wastewater treatment, professional aquatic facilities, shrimp farms. We feel pretty confident we've been watching these fish for weeks. We know that we have a healthy specimen here, but there's other parameters that you want to make sure that are in balance with your aquarium. pH, salinity, Evie's phone, <laughs> um, <laughs> all your filtration set up. We're going to come back and check these in the morning. Also, we're going to film with Lisa and uh, go through the beta room. That's an amazing room. So that's going to be a separately released video. So keep your eye out for that. And there look at go. the gizmo. Just like, he's so excited. He's just like, hey, hey, guys. So the only thing you can't do with Gizmo is you can't add fresh water to him or he turns real nasty, okay? Oh. So. so After midnight, though. After midnight. <laughs> After midnight, <laughs> it becomes a real problem. <laughs> the viewers are like, who is Gizmo? <laughs> All right, Fritz fam, we just finished filming the KG Tropical Saltwater Aquarium install. And for our next video, we're going to be walking you through Aquariums Unlimited and following up with a tour of the beta facility here at KG Tropical.